How do I train my dragons? Or, better said, how do I train my orchids? But because there was a curtain, I thought it would be cute to say, how do I train my dragons? But anyway, thank you for joining me. As it is the end of the hottest month, supposedly, of the year, I'm going to just do a little peekaboo review of if my orchid training has worked. And with that being said, we're going to go up to the top level of my blooming alley. Before we do that, hang on a second, let me just clarify. To the left is south, what you saw with the curtain down. South and right in front of us is west. So as the orchids have been growing, hopefully, whoops, let's do this without falling. Clearly, there is the intention and the plan to keep them somewhat upright. I don't have many mounted, but we'll check on those afterwards. But I wanted to give a quick overview as to how I train my growths to keep the orchid from becoming too cumbersome. Like you see this big pastoral innocence here. I do have a support with wires around it, but mainly that is to stabilize the orchid in the pot. There goes a lacquer bead. Initially, for early days, I would prefer not to have the wire. So what I do is when I see a new growth coming, I've moved some orchids away, otherwise we would not be able to see anything. When I see a new growth coming, I face the growth towards me. That's me right here, away from the light over there so that it turns up and back in on itself back in onto the plant. The other reason is I can watch root growth. And as I have a dry top layer of Lekka, I missed a lot. And when I see roots coming, I don't want them to dry out. So I get to see how the roots develop and keep misting as and when needed. But it's mainly works this way for me because of light and the direction of light. So this growth, I would say here, in this case, it's a win. It's straight up. It doesn't even need the supporting wire you see there. So I can take that off. My dendrobiums, for example, I'm very happy to see these two new growths here because this one hasn't been doing much of anything. It's been struggling. But again, you can see I've got roots coming and it's a little bit awkward because I have one growth to the left and one growth to the right. So how am I training it? Well, I'm going with the biggest growth and I want it to come up towards me, away from the light and grow into the light so that it basically keeps centering itself. Another example, let me pan you over slowly is my Maxima here. This is one new growth right here, developed earlier this season, is already fully matured. Of its own accord, it grew inside the perimeter of the wire because again, it's facing me and away from the light. So it grew nice, straight and upright. The subsequent two new growths are doing the same thing. So I do have a little bit of a disadvantage with light, but I'm hoping that it is clear to see what I'm talking about. I do not have my growth facing the light. Coincidentally, the one growth is growing into the support, which is great, but I can see that the second growth here is growing upright, nice and straight because of the fact it's growing more into the direction of the light, straightening the growth out. What else have we got? Where is a discrepancy? 
let me see if I can find one because so far I'm showing you that the concept and the principle has worked. Let's go down a level and see what else we're trying to achieve here. Here's the one I got from the orchid room. And normally the shelf is full, but I've pulled off some orchids for the purpose of this video. And you can see the one growth that it was growing when it came is extending nicely. And I have the orchid a little flatter in the pot because I want the roots to establish. But I'm training the new growth to grow towards the light and away from this leaning one so that eventually I have an established Kaularthron upright in a pot. That is why it is growing towards me as opposed to me making it face the light. What else can I show you? My intermedia crossed with Aquini is doing the same thing. All the growths are staying nicely in the pot. This latest one now also facing me in order to grow towards the light in that direction. Here I have a Renanthera citrina. Let me show you because I don't want to just repeat how the growths are growing straight. I'm happy about those successes. But here's the Renanthera citrina. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. When I got it, you can see it has like a curve in it. Yeah, I didn't want that to continue. So in my first few months of owning this orchid, I had it fake. The light was coming from the right. Purposes of this example, it would face this way so that the direction of the sun or the light was there in order to attempt to straighten it up. Then I saw how the leaves were starting to do a little bit of a twist. And I figured that's not a good thing. I don't want a twisted one. So I accepted the curve for what it was. But now I want it to be established, growing upright with a light coming from the front of it. So I have somehow managed to marginally straighten it. It was much more kink than this without risking the twisting of the leaves on the stem. And it's working nicely. It's growing beautifully. And it's got a nice bright corner of the shelf here where the curtain doesn't always reach. So it gets a little bit of dappled sun. The same principle continues on the lower shelf. My Sologeny purpurata, latest growth. We've just repotted this one. I have it to the opposite direction of the light in order to keep it from leaning over. I want it to grow as upright as possible in order to make my life a little bit easier also with placing on the shelf. In the back, I'm going to take the purpurata away. I'll be right back. In the back here, I have Guatemalensis with two new growths on the opposite end of the orchid. I have a support wire which I may need to bring this one in a bit because I have no choice but to keep it as perpendicular to the incoming light because I do not want these. This is a big orchid and I do not want this one to become unruly. So far it's working. They're growing nice and upright and eventually I can pull this one in a touch more because of the supporting wire I have in place. I have my Maasai Red here on the right doing really well as well. And this new growth, I don't want it coming out this way and becoming a problem when I walk through my little blooming alley. And that is why the two new growths in the back, they're okay. They can grow a little bit towards the light but this is the point of reference. I want to keep my space here to the right as free of disturbance as possible. So this one, you can see it's curving nicely. 
and growing towards the light. Here's my Coilostylus ciliaris. It is in, by nature a beautiful upright growing orchid. I want to keep it that way and help it along. These two new growths are going to come towards me for a considerable amount of time. But then the opposite light influence in there will bring them up and make them grow naturally towards the light and keeping it nicely contained. Same with my Iricolor in the back there, the new growth. I have only just supported it recently with a little bit of wire just to maintain its stability during these hot days. But it grew beautifully all on its own for the longest time and is now also nicely contained in an upright shape. Once again, my Francis Fox here is now growing a little bit to the left because this is where the light is coming from most part of the day, but this is the west direction of the light. So I have it a little bit of half and half, like three quarters, because I don't want it to be too much only of the west because you know it doesn't have as much sun if it's only getting light from the west. So I'm splitting the difference by giving it like a three quarter turn as opposed to directing it completely opposite to the west. It gets more light for the longer part of the day and then extended light when the sun comes through here behind this curtain. So this curtain here is always down, no matter what time of year. The south side curtain has only been down the past two weeks because of the way the angle of the sun is now coming through and I don't want them to burn. All my orchids are acclimatized, but if I have hot wind and hot sun, they're gonna burn no matter how acclimatized the orchids are. So now, at a certain time of day, usually around 1.30 or 2, I come out and I put the curtain down until about 6, 7, and then I bring it back up for a little bit more added light. It looks shadier here at the moment through the camera than it actually is. This curtain also helps me against the hot wind. Sometimes when the wind comes from the south, I can give the orchids in here a little bit of respite because I put the curtain down just to brace it from the wind. More training is going on up here. This is my Dendrobium tortile, and it's supposed to be a mounted pendant orchid. I just potted mine up this season but I, want, I don't want the orchid to become like a cascade because of space issues. If I had a hanging option that would make the cultivation of this orchid easier for me, then I would let it cascade wherever it wanted to. I can't do that in my case. This is where it lives now all year round. And I'm training the new growths to bend towards the light. This is a test. I can see that it's working they are doing the curve to match the oldest growth, but will they get long enough in order to bend that way permanently or will they stay upright? I have no idea. I'm learning. This is the first time I've had one potted up. So at least one can see that the light training is working. The question is, will it be similar to this as in all the way down the pot? still have two months of growing left to do. None of the final leaves are on those canes, so I'm working on that concept. And then all these mounted orchids up here, basically they can do what they want because they are growing towards the light, which is now behind us or coming directly at them. So their light is smack right into them, all of them. That is my polyanthum, my Unicum, Anosmum, Victoria Regina, and Wilsonii. And down here, I have a few more, which is another Unicum, a Philum Cakies, and Dendrobium Exile. 
So that is the part where I would say I can show examples of how I train my orchids and where I have seen that it's actually successful and working out. So let's go and see where I think I've made a few mistakes because the growth will show us that I did. And well, I question what happened there. So this is my full east facing shelf where I put my top guns. Welcome any new subscribers. I have done a tour of my different growing areas during the hot months of the year. And this would be the east facing side where all the really hot and highlight orchids are. So this curtain up here comes up when the sun is only left at this corner. Otherwise it is protected from the first thing in the morning until the sun only reaches this corner because I want this little Chrysnetia green light to bloom and it has never done that for me. So I'm wondering if I'm not giving it enough light. You can see that my Vinosa here has gotten a bit too much, but that's not the point of this exercise. The point of this video here is to show you how I'm trying to train my catacetums to not go nuts with their bulbs. So all the growths are behind. This is my Jumbo Mickey. And you can see how all the growths are in the back. Well, the front, front of the orchid, but in the back according to display, because I don't want them to become like all over the place. So you can see how they have grown into the orchid itself and they can stay in this pot for the next year, for the next set of growths, no problem unless something happens on this corner here and then I have to rethink what I've just said. But they are now facing the light as opposed to becoming all over the place in the pot. And the same works out, worked out well here with my Fred Clark Guerrero Black Pearl. Huge bulb, very pleased. And the front of the orchid is here, but I moved it so that it would face the light directly. And you can see what it's done. The bulbs are nice and compact in the pot. And another year, no need to repot this one. And you can see how it's curved itself towards the light. So you could th say in general, I am facing the orchid backwards according to where the light is. And in this case, in, in the southern section, that works well for me because I can see the growth. I can see what's happening. In this section, I have to, I see the back of the orchid more than the front because the light might be coming from behind me. And then I have, I have to face the new growth towards the wall so they grow into the pot. Here's my Epicatlea. Sil Sorry, my Epidendrum ciliaris with crossed with Brassavola digbiana. Look at this corky growth. That didn't go well, did it? <laughs> uh, oh dear. Um, yeah. So this is the first growth. It gave, it pushed out at the beginning of the season, and I did exactly what I said I always did. This is where it lives in the summer all the time, and not even when it's in bloom, because in bloom it blooms during the winter, and that's when everybody, well, this, this particular orchid would be inside. But yeah, so it grew, it grew the way it's supposed to, and really, really then doubled back on itself. And that's not normal, that it would do a kink like that. Maybe it grew too fast before the structure had time to harden. Maybe there was too much light suddenly or not enough and it had to find its way hard. I don't know. I don't know. But the next growth it's pushing out, this is the second growth of the season here. It's doing exactly what I had intended for it to do. So I have a kinky growth. <laughs> 
and I, I can't exactly say why. The idea being it would behave exactly like this growth here, which has come along beautifully. And I don't even need to put a support wire around it anymore. It doesn't need it. But I have a similar one right next door to it, which I find interesting as well. This is my Sunya Green. And it has come on beautifully, except I don't like that. It has come on beautifully this year. I cut the rhizome of this one earlier this year, but I have not seen any new growth coming out the back due to that cut. Maybe next year, we'll see. But it's also done the same thing for me this year as the other one. I've got two new growths on each lead, this being the first of the, of the season. And it's done the kinkiest turn, just like its neighbor there. The first growth just went all over the place. Whereas in tandem, the first growth here is nice and straight and upright. And the two subsequent new growths, they're all doing exactly what I'm asking them to do. Upright, stay in the pot. So I don't know why one just takes off and become, looks like a noodle. And then the other ones look great. So, but I wanted to show you, apart from having a little chit chat regarding how I train my growths, my dragons, my orchids, to stay upright in the pot. Look, no wire needed. This bloomed for me this season. That was this one. That's Bercoiseriae variety striata. Let's say it correctly. Lelia purpurata variety Bercoiseriae striata. That's its full name. I'm sorry. You deserve the accolades. You need to be addressed accordingly. But so, yeah, I've had this growth bloom for me and it's beautiful in the pot and the next growth coming right behind it beautiful up in the pot so that's working out gorgeous that's exactly how i like to see things and this is how it lives a little further away from the corner here because of ciliano i don't need him chomping away at more leaves but this is where it lives because the light is coming from this direction let's have a look at one more catacetum my little late comer I don't understand, but this one came out a little bit later in the growth. And this is Jack of Diamonds. Didn't start early in the season. I only had to start watering this like mid-June, but the same thing. The front of the plant is facing away from the light and I'm getting a really nice growth snug bulb against bulb. So that is the idea here. It doesn't always work out that well. And this pot is super light. It needs more water. It doesn't always work out that well. But when it does work out, it's very, very satisfying. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of someone who's coming to visit. Look at this. Uh huh. We are in business. This is Nanipuakea Dogashima. And with that said, with that little preview, thank you so very, very much for watching. If you have any suggestions regarding my funky growth, please let me know. I'm super interested to hear about it. And I hope you all stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.